The video today follows on from the respiratory system and looking at something called a spirometer. And we're going to pay particular attention to reading a spirometer. Now, some people may be familiar with the term and some people may not. So we're going to start by looking at actually what a spirometer. Now, as you can see from the three images here, um, we've got quite an advanced one here. Okay, which is basically um, one you may see at a hospital. Likewise here. A little bit more advanced. Okay, and then we've got the gentleman sat down here. What a spirometer actually is, is it's a, it's a machine which is a common office use, particularly in hospitals, which is used to assess how well your lungs work by measuring how much air you inhale and how much you exhale and how quickly you are able to exhale. So basically, experiment is used to diagnose um, things which we spoke about before, such as asthma or any other issues um, associated with with your your breathing. So you'd often see these in, in hospitals, you'd often see them at the doctors, um, but they're also used within physical activity as well, particularly uh, at football clubs or within athletics. All right, so also as well, what we need to think about here and, and, and consider and understand is how, uh, how a spirometer is used and how it's measured. So a spirometer measures the amount of um, air or the speed of the air that can be inhaled or exhaled. So the most common measurements used are um, force expiratory volume. So basically how much air you can breathe in one second. Okay, and that is normally measured in something what we call... Um, fev one so like I said this is basically the amount of uh, air you can breathe out in one second so like I said often used in hospitals uh, and as you can see this gentleman here being tested by the senior nurse so moving on from there okay but in order to understand in order to read a spirometer you need to be able to understand these five key terms which we've covered previously so from uh, last lesson you should now be understanding towards the five key areas but i'm quickly going to go over these uh, first we're looking at tidal volume okay so tidal volume like i've said before like a tide goes in and out that is your normal breathing rate so your tidal volume is your the amount of air you breathe in and out during one breath is known as your tidal volume and as you know during exercise your tidal volume increases you breathe more deeply, okay, and this happens for a couple of reasons, often because you're, you're needing more oxygen, okay, so this helps really ex energy to the muscles during aerobic activity and obviously remove a lactic acid, okay, and then secondly, as we've said before, uh, the word about carbon dioxide, our bodies do not like carbon dioxide, and so um, carbon dioxide is removed through, through breathing, known as tidal volume. Your vital capacity, Okay, we've covered the word vital capacity is a, is a key area again. So um, that's basically the most air you could possibly breathe in after your biggest breath out. So basically, if looking there about the, the, the size of your lungs, the vital capacity, like I said previously, uh, on average, um, an average uh, adult would have six litres of air in their lungs. And as we said about Michael Phelps, Okay, you had a, had a massive lung capacity. Uh, these two words here, uh, inspiratory reserve volume, that's basically when you breathe in from your tidal volume, it's a little bit of breath, you are then able to inhale after the tidal volume. So if you are breathing in normally, you breathe in, okay, and then obviously there'll be still some reserve there for you to continue doing that. And expiratory reserve volume is... Again, after your tidal volume, when you breathe out, the extra bit of air you are able to go back to as reserve to breathe out. So, there are four um, key key uh, key words, and the fifth key word is residual reserve volume. So basically, once you have um, measured your vital capacity, often when you do your largest breath in and then breathe out. Again, it's the amount of air still left in your lungs which you are able to do after. So, like I said, in order to understand reading the spirometer, you do need to understand these five key terms. All right, so now we're going to move on and look at what we mean by meter. So, here we've got an image of a spirometer. I just want you to spend 
uh, or pause this video just to have a look at, at, at what we're talking about. Okay, so I'm just going to draw your attention to a couple of key areas. Now, all the key words are on there, uh, but what you need to kind of understand here is um, that this section here would be, uh, this section here, sorry, would be our, our mouth breathing. Okay, so what you've got there is your tidal volume. Okay, so if I just remove that, your tidal volume here, which is your normal breathing. Okay, and again, like I've said, in spiritual reserve volume, so normally tidal your tidal volume, your normal breathing, and then you've got a little bit left over in this section here. Okay, likewise again, with your normal breathing, again with your tidal volume, you've then got your expiratory reserve volume, so you can breathe a little bit out. And a good way of doing that is just to actually practice uh, your breathing normally, and then look at doing, uh, res uh, and then acting on your reserve volumes after your breathing. Okay, and then the other two what we're going to look at is this vital capacity here. Okay, so your vital capacity is the, the amount of air you are able to get into your lungs. Alright, so how much air you can actually get into your lungs. So as you can see here, okay, we're breathing in, okay, and then we can breathe out, okay, and then you've got the residual volume, which is the amount of air left in your lungs after your largest exhale. So again, it is a case of looking at the diagram and trying to understand how the key terms fit into our our, our breathing patterns. Um, what I'd like to do now, I'm just going to pause this video and I'm just going to move on to a blank um, blank spiral, spirometer and I'd like you to have a look at the keywords and see if you can remember where the key terms go and the important bit here is what we spoke about when I just flicked one is this it's the A3 the AO3 sorry the justification the analyzing of key information this is a key area of GCC spec so like I say AO1 is the key terms AO2 is in applying them okay so understanding what each key term means and applying it to a particular sport or a particular pattern in physical exercise this is a key section to do with uh, AO3, which is where you will analyse. Right, so you are going to analyse this spirometer. We've just seen it previously, but as you can see, you've got different areas within the spirometer which you should be able to identify using the key terms. So have a go at that, and then check your understanding using the slide previously.